Hello, this is Lady Boulay, and thank you for clicking on the video. Thank you for your support. Thank you for subscribing to the channel. Thank you for your thumbs up, for your comments, and thank you for sharing the videos. Thank you for all you do to support the channel. And yes, as we explore African American culture, I want to remind you that we are commanded to love one another, whether we want to or not, or whether we agree with each other or not. So something ignorant has been going on in black America for the last few years and that is called the gender war. A fight between black men and black women. Who's the smartest? Who's the dumbest? Who's the most successful? Who's the most single parents? Who's the worst at whatever it is the argument is about? This is very ignorant and it's very destructive to black people. We have been here under the same system for the same amount of time and we are all subjected to the same things and we have been for the amount of time that we've been here. The trauma might be worse for black men in some areas and the trauma would be just as bad for black women in another area. So we actually have done better when we've worked together, when we've seen the problems as one and approached them from a unified position. But this whole thing about pointing the blame and finding fault with each other is really destructive. There's no other word for it. It is destructive. And all we're doing is making ourselves, um, to me, it looks silly. Now, this might sound smart to some of y'all, but this is silly to me. I have black men coming on here telling me, you only talk about black men. You don't never say nothing about black women. And then black women will come over here and say, there's no good black men. Don't say anything about good black men, even though I have said, this is not a divestment channel. But the point I am making is that all of these things that black people are engaging in now is just a distraction. There are some real problems out there and there are some real strategies in place to turn back the clock on whatever progress we have made as we bicker back and forth with each other. Now, case in point, when George Floyd's situation happened, black people had the ear of the world and, and a lot of things sort of came out of it that could have been positive. But as we spend time with all of these scandals and with all of this nonsense that some black people engage in, people are going back trying to turn back the hands of time. Now, the Black Lives Matter murals are being taken down and they are passing laws making it illegal for you to put up a Black Lives Matter banner or sign or do a mural. How does that hurt anybody? I don't think it does except that you are not supposed to think that your life matters. So when black people get on these social media platforms tearing each other down, you're playing right into their hands and right into what they want you to believe about yourself anyway. You don't matter. Black men don't matter. Black women don't matter. We have to care first. So see, that's one thing. And then I just read that the DEI, Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion, has become illegal as of January 1st. So all of these corporate offices and all of these institutions that had diversity, equity, and inclusion training and had that kind of policy in place, that has been disbanded. That's over. So everything that we thought we were doing uh, we thought we made a little progress. Well, you know, that there, there are people in place who are working day and night to overturn those things. No more Black Lives Matter. No more diversity, equity, and inclusion. They've already overturned affirmative action. And so the system is putting the standards back in place that they've had in place all the time. Meanwhile, we think we have the luxury of pointing fingers at each other. I have said this before and I'll say it again. 
If you don't like black men, stay away from black men. If you don't like black women, stay away from black women. Either way, black men are going to be okay and black women are going to be okay. The problem is you. And if you have this deep-rooted anger or hatred toward black men or black women, understand that is a generational curse. That's a generational dysfunction. I am not trying to be a psychologist. But when you can group a whole group of people in one category and come up with one definition of that group of people, then your thinking is off. Now let me get to the point that I really want to make, and that is this. The system that we are living in always wants to turn this system back to a place where they are comfortable, where they don't have to compete with anybody, where they don't have to work, and where whatever they say goes regardless. So that's what we're working with. Now this is what brought this on for me. This is a Confederate flag if you didn't know it. This flag represents tyranny for black people. This is the battle flag of the Civil War that the Confederate States of America took into battle or something similar to this. So this represents supremacy over black people. This flag was hanging in a town called Harrison, Ohio, and the article says several people are raising concern after a Confederate flag was spotted in Harrison. The flag was spotted flying near the city's welcome sign. So, welcome to Harrison, Ohio. We are a white supremacy town. That's what this is saying. The sign's proximity to the flag had some community members asking officials to take it down. Harrison Mayor Ryan Grubbs tells WLWT both the sign and the flag were put up by a family that owns the property where it is posted. Now that might be true or it might not be true, but the mayor is backing these people up. We're going to put the Confederate flag beside the welcome sign. And this is a town of 12,000 people. And I don't know what the racial makeup is, and it doesn't matter because they put the sign up and they mean what they say. Here's the thing. Ohio was not even a southern state. It was not a slave state during the Civil War, and this flag represents slavery. Ohio was a free state during the slavery days, and this is what they have in a western city in Ohio in 2024 now. The mayor added, saying, all citizens have the right to free speech and individuals speak in different ways. I do have a team looking into the display to see if it is in violation in any way of our zoning requirements or if it is misrepresentation. So see, he's trying to say <laughs> they have a right to do this and it's not misrepresentation. It's saying exactly what it wants to say. So all I'm saying is that these people don't ever give up. They never give up. They have a fantasy of how things were back in 1842, and they would very much like for things to go back like that. White people never had it so good as they had it when black people were enslaved in their backyards or on the side of the house or back in the pasture or wherever they were. Their status was derived from how many slaves they had. So when you see George Washington or Thomas Jefferson, sometimes they'll say they had 100 slaves. Sometimes they'll say they had 300 slaves. Sometimes they'll say, oh, they had over 500 slaves because that was status. How many slaves they had and how much the slaves had achieved. That's where the white people's status came from. Not by anything they had done, but what the enslaved people had done. That's how come I don't get upset when I hear white people talking about states' rights, states' rights. 
and taking that Confederate flag, talking about heritage and all of that in Southern pride, because I know it's nostalgia for the way things used to be. The living was easy for them, even after slavery, during Jim Crow and that sharecropping system. That was just another form of slavery. And they were really getting over on those black people. One male slave, one healthy male slave was taking care of 10 white people because one healthy male slave could bring in a crop of cotton by himself because a male slave, a healthy male slave could pick a bale of cotton in a week. Two bales of cotton in a week and a half. So that was wealth in those days. So you doggone right, they would want a system like that back. Because even though it wouldn't be cotton, but guess what it would be? Look at the music industry. Look at the amount of money these black men are making in music. Not to mention the women, just the men. Look at sports. Look how many black millionaires and sometimes billionaires are coming out of the sports industry alone. So when you combine sports and music, you don't have to even include anything else. You're talking about billions of dollars. If slavery time was going on, all of that money would be going to white folks. You think they haven't thought about that? I guarantee you they have. This content creator, Nanya Sim, had this video about a black woman talking about how upset white people get at black people who are upper class, who have money. The same sentiment came out of South Africa when the South Africans were talking about how upset the white people in South Africa get when black South Africans have money. So see, they had a system in place that was guaranteed to keep them wealthy and propped up and keep us poor. So yes, they want that system back. That's why they don't give up. Jason Black says, and I know some of y'all don't like Jason Black, but Jason Black says that white supremacy never takes a break. And that's why. So while we're luxuriating in a gender war, fighting each other, they are devising strategies to turn back time and make things like they used to be. So this flag of tyranny representing the Civil War, slavery, and all that went with it, is flying high in Harrison, Ohio. Now, do we think this is the only town in Ohio or in the country where this mentality and, this, and these sentiments exist? No. It's all over this country. So my point is that the progress that we have made as black people has been made not because any of us was perfect but because we understood the assignment and we worked together. And that is the only way we are going to survive. Now, everybody who thinks they can fight this fight about gender is engaging in a very serious case of self-indulgence. And there's also a level of silliness in this. It's just very silly because you can choose not to engage or be involved in a gender war because it seems like you're trying to control other people's behavior and you cannot do that. Thank you for listening. Let me know what you think about the video. Subscribe to the channel. Give me a thumbs up. Leave a comment. Share the video. And as always, have a great day.